Hello and welcome to the session on the Log4j exploit. My name is Rob from Steam Labs and I think we're probably a few weeks late to the game in talking to you about different tools which you can use to see if your web services are vulnerable. Now I'm recording this for our student base at Steam Labs and for anyone who follows our channel and if you're wondering why we are so late to the game on Log4j, over the last few weeks since this exploit was released to different cybersecurity professionals around the world and whilst people were panicking I've been working with my teams of pen testers for the different clients which we have globally as well as Steam Labs and also the other company that I work for to make sure that our services are not vulnerable to Log4j and also that our client services are not vulnerable to the Log4j exploit. Now in this video I'm going to be introducing you to a scanner which we have used which allows us to look at both URLs and also IP addresses. And then in future videos, I'll be introducing you to different Python scripts, which we've also been using to see if we can identify if services are vulnerable to log4j. And if you see the different video which I posted just yesterday on how to set up Minecraft, I'm also going to be demonstrating how you can hack Minecraft if somebody's service is vulnerable to log4j and how you can also rickroll them. Now, before we get started today, and as normal, these videos which we do record are purely for educational purposes only. Now, let's get started and check out this Log4j scanner which we're going to be introducing today. As mentioned at the beginning of today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about Log4j. I'm going to be introducing you to a vulnerability scanner. But before we kind of get on to that, I'm going to be sharing these two different articles with you. So this one is particularly interesting. So the title, Company Scrambled to Defend Against the Newly Discovered Log4j. And this is the 3rd of Jan today, right? So most people's services should have been patched by now, but I guarantee that many aren't. If you saw that Minecraft's blog post, which was particularly unusual, they were identifying and explaining that people could use the Log4j exploit to take over players' computers. And something which you're going to see on my Kali Linux in a minute is one of the Log4j exploit and Python programs we have installed. We can actually hack somebody's Minecraft, we can rickroll them, and we can create a reverse connections to their computer. So do stay posted for that video, which is coming out really, really soon. And do have a look at other videos for like Hack5 and David Bob Valve. I have already explored these concepts as well. If you are wondering why we are late to the game with Log4j, I've been spending time with my pen testers, making sure that our clients are not affected by this exploit, making sure the company which I work for are not affected by this exploit, and also making sure that our students at Steam Labs also understand how to protect their companies because they are pen testers as well. Uh, against the, the Log4j exploit, which was uncovered earlier in December. Now, this is a particularly good article. Do have a read of it, and they will talk about some of the major companies that have discovered uh, critical flaws in their systems. I think that this article is also particularly good as well. So, 10 technology vendors affected by Log4j, and this is going to identify the code uh, calamity, which was a uh, uh, affected by uh, this uh, Log4j exploit as well as other uh, major, major global companies as well. But without further ado, let's move on to the Full Hunt Log4j scanner. So this is probably the easiest um, Log4j scanner to use. I am going to be introducing you to another couple of Python Log4j scanners, but in order to uh, mimic of what we're doing in today's video and remember everything we're doing is purely for educational purposes we're going to be using our own domain to see if we are vulnerable to log4j which hopefully we are not and all you're going to need uh, set up today is kali linux and also python 3 so i'm going to head over to my kali linux uh, machine right now and i'm going to open up a new terminal window come back to this one in a minute i'm going to go full screen and then First things first, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you've got Python 3 installed. So if you just type in Python 3, this should show you the version of Python that you have installed. If you don't have Python 3 installed, you're going to need to install it uh, for today's video, installing the Log4j scanner by Full Hunt. And I'll put a description underneath the video as to how you can install Python 3 if you don't already have this set up. 
Now, the next thing you're going to need here is you're going to need that link. So again, this is underneath the video and we are going to use the command git and then clone. So let's uh, clear this and let's type in the git clone and you can see that I have already installed this all right, already. So we're going to do git clone, https, github.com, forham, log4j, hyphen scan, .get. And I already have this installed because it already exists. If you're installing from the first time, this is a command that you need. Now, over here on this terminal window, um, you'll be able to see that when I'm typing in CD log4j, if I hit tab here, these are the different tools that I already have installed because I've been exploring log4j for a few weeks. Uh, again, for Steam Labs, for the company I work for, and also my client base. So I have already installed the log4j RCE scanner, which is really, really good. So do check out our video, which we posted in a couple of days on this. And I've also been exploiting Minecraft. So I've set up a Minecraft server on my Mac, set up a Minecraft server on my Windows machine. I've been joining this as a player and I've been exploiting my Minecraft to identify what I'm able to do. Can I get a reverse connection? Can I rip on my own devices? And again, all purely for educational purposes, so do stay posted for the video which will be released in a few days time. But for now, what we are going to do is we're going to do cd log4j hyphen scan, press tab to finish. And this is uh, where we are going to get started today. Now, I think it's particularly important that we use the article here. Um, as I said, you're going to need to have Python 3 installed. So I'm going to type in Python 3 now. And in order to uh, see uh, different devices which are affected, we can scan different IPs within our network, but we can also use URLs as well. So let's head across to that article and let's have a look at how we can actually uh, use uh, this different information here. So here they're gonna have uh, examples of how we can scan a single URL. So you use Python free log4jan, uh, log4j scan.py hyphen u and then the URL. And I'm gonna use the Steam Labs URL today. Okay, so I'm going to type in, let's go back, I'm gonna type in hyphen u and then https www.steamlabs.go.co.th and what this is going to do is it's going to use this scanner and identify if our domain is vulnerable and you can see we're getting a small error here at the moment because I haven't typed in the command properly so do use the instructions so it's log4j scan.py so uh, that is my error here so let's go back over to log4j and it is hyphen scan to pi. And then if we press enter, what this is going to do is it's going to identify is our domain vulnerable to the log4j exploit. Remember, this is a Java exploit. This is CV 2021 44228. And it's going to take a couple of minutes to see if our domain is vulnerable. Uh, when I checked this a couple of days ago, it showed that it wasn't vulnerable. Let's just see what the results come in. Whilst we're waiting for our results, here we go. So targets do not seem to be vulnerable. So uh, we can do this with IPs uh, within an organization that may be running Java, um, but also with URLs as now. I'm not going to uh, type in some of the URLs which have been testing recently because they have been vulnerable to the Log4j exploit. So I'm just using our domain here today. And I'm gonna head across back to that article again. This is a very, very quick video on Log4j. And let's have a look at other things or other devices which we can scan here. So we can scan a single URL, okay? Um, we can scan a file of URLs, and we can also uh, scan uh, a list of URLs as well, uh, as well as IP addresses as well. So let's try an IP address, and we'll have a look at this Docker support thing again in a moment. So let's go over here. And let's see what happens when we try to scan an IP address within our network. So on my Mac, which is running Minecraft, and it is a vulnerable version, but we're still gonna see. So if config, so my IP address is 111 on my Mac. So let's try 192.168.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1
and then 111. We can use both public IPs here and also our local IPs. And again, so this is working for my local IP, uh, a bit more information in comparison, but we can see that uh, my Mac, which is running uh, Minecraft, is also not vulnerable. Now, hopefully from this very, very quick example, you can see how you can scan IPs, you can be public and local, and also how you can also scan URLs. And you can also see how to set up the Full Hunt Log4j scanner today. You can see that it's talking about Docker here. I don't actually have this set up. I didn't need it for this install here. But hopefully this has been helpful and you do have kind of a basic idea of how to use the Full Hunt scanner. As I said, do stay posted for other different Python scripts which are going to be demonstrating on how to identify if your services or web services are vulnerable to Log4j. And also, more interestingly, how we can hack Minecraft for education. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you in our next Log4j video soon.